then again, I did survive a drop into the fire and lava, so... Maybe I have that going for me? And I wonder what this weapon is going to be. Funnily enough... It's the Hero's Bow. Probably the most useful weapon in the entire game in the second dungeon. Right now. A lot of the other things that we'll find in this dungeon... Actually, I should switch that to... Yeah, I'm just gonna have to get used to having projectiles on Y. But, yes, strangely enough, a lot of the weapons you get in the other dungeons in this game are just gimmicky weapons that you'll only use a few times, and mostly in the dungeon. So let's shoot down the bridge here. And before you head in, note the torch slug on the ceiling. Now we can do something about them. And that's what arrows look like in this game. And they don't give you dialogue to say, Hi, these are arrows. How are you doing? So let's see if we can pull these Beamos out. Can we? No, we can't. I wonder why that is. Let's ask the torch slug before he kills us. Or we kill him. Put out the flame, buddy. Stop, drop, and roll. It apparently doesn't work on your clothes. And the burning didn't hurt me for some reason. That's fairly strange. Let's see, what can we do to activate those beam laws? Because you know they're just going to go after us once we do something in here. Hmm. Ah, there we go. We activate one, and now all of them are suddenly the worst guys in the world. But yeah, just circle around, take them down. One after the other. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Now, there are only a few of them you sort of need to take out. But I just like to take care of all of them so I don't have to put up with them. And I suggest you do the same. And before I forget about this dude here... Dude. I miss being able to strafe while I'm shooting stuff, too. But yeah, just pull these things out of the way. I like to pull them all the way out, even though I'm pretty sure you can get around them without pulling them out all the way. Anything of use. Pretty sure the compass is down here, as well as the last key shard we need, so... Yeah, you can tell the room off to the side on the map. If you knew what you were doing, this would be the only one you move. And funny enough, this is the only one of the three Goron Elder Rooms that you have one entrance, one exit. You can't get out a different way. There's no ladder up to the top to sit. And what a surprise. Is there blue in there? Is there blue in this rock? No, that's... Purple? Red? That doesn't make sense. I thought Nehru was going to be represented in here. Guess what we can't fit in our wallet? Yeah, this is going to be one of those treasures that's going to pop up on our compass if we ever come back here again. This guy is probably the strangest looking Goron I've ever seen. He sort of looks like Braveheart. But I've never seen Braveheart, so... Not really sure what to make of it. By the way, did you notice the Goron's ruby tattoo on his arm? As well as on all the doors in here? Yep. So many references in this game, now that I actually look for them. You can also look around these areas where the elders live, and they have a bed and everything. This guy doesn't, though. You, my friend, are weird. But he's also awesome for it. I don't know what to make of that. So out we go into the room with all of the Beamos. And we will continue moving all of them out of the way until we have what we're looking for. One of these, I'm pretty sure, has the compass. There are very few things in this game that I remember. This is one of them. Is anybody surprised? Well, now we know where all the treasure chests are, and the one in the uh, Goron Elder's room is going to continuously pop up on the map, and I'm going to be bothered by it, because I know it's one of those treasure chests I just can't get. Even though I'd very much like to, and even though I could have fit a large majority of those rupees in my wallet, I had to leave it there. And if I ever need to come back to this dungeon and look for a treasure chest I didn't get, like maybe I missed a heart piece even though I haven't, maybe you did, maybe I did, who knows. It just bothers me that I can't get them all. Because if I'm looking for one specific chest, I'm going to keep going to that room. And I'm going to keep being disappointed. By the way, torch slugs or fire keys, I don't care what you are, you're dying. Gotta get used to aiming in this game, but like I said when I first got the slingshot, 
the control stick on the GameCube controller after the N64 controller in Jet Force Gemini is a godsend. I love this control stick. I think it's even better than the Wii's, to be completely honest with you. I haven't held any controllers in my hand besides the, maybe, like, an Xbox controller I've held for a few seconds. Oh, you you guys all fell down? Hi, Dodongos! You wanna know a quick and easy way to take care of these guys? Shoot them in the tail. Three shots with the arrow in the tail. Hey, buddy, you gonna turn around stupidly so I can hit you in the tail? Please? There you go. I thought the torch slug fell down. But yeah, this is what I like doing, just sitting here sniping down enemies. Because I love the controller so much. I love the control stick. It's very nice to handle. I could go over there, fetch the items that they drop, which are more than likely arrows for refills, but... I just like the control stick so much that I'll sit there and snipe them all day. I don't care. Hi, buddy. Didn't need to shoot you with the arrows, but I did anyway, because I wanted to. We're about to max out our rupee count, too. I don't know why I thought it was 500. It's only 200. Dodongo, you'll be annoying when I flip upside down, so I'm going to take care of you now if I can. Yeah, upside down Dodongos are not fun to deal with. wonder how he dies upside down. Ah, he falls. Interesting. I've never tried that before. Is there anybody else up there I can shoot down? Or is it just you? I think it's just you, and I never actually deal with him anyway. So yeah, guess what we have to do here? This is one of the coolest shots in the game, I think. When we went to first person mode on the wall, you thought that was weird? Walking on the ceiling? Seeing this place flipped upside down? Really weird. Really disorienting. Did I activate it? There we go. Hello, door! I've always wanted to see if you can get into the door before the cutscene, but I don't think it's possible. So now that we're all the way up here, as you can imagine, they're gonna hide a chest up here, and this is probably 20? Another 50 that I have to put back. This is why I like to make sure I know where all the heart pieces are in a dungeon before I come in here, otherwise, if I'm looking for one, I'll open all of those and it'll be a pain in the neck. Can I stress that enough? Guess we have another bridge to knock down. I so hit that rope. Any more rants I can go on? This dungeon's almost over. It's a lot faster than I remembered it being. Actually, I'm curious to see if there are any other treasure chests I missed. I know that's a 50. That's a 50. What's that room again? Oh yeah, that's a... Uh, haven't had access to that one yet. And everything else is done. So I guess I'll just check out that one chest, which had better be the big key, because if it's not, we can't get into the... Actually, never mind, we have a big key already. What am I talking about? So let's head back into this room before we get hit by the fire case who gets extinguished just because we open the door, and we see a new enemy in here that I said would pop up later. This is a lot like the lava version. I don't know what its actual name is. It looks kind of like a palpitoad. If I remember the Palpitoad's name from the fifth generation, the second form of the frog thing, the water ground type, that I used in the Japanese black, I think it was. So let's head back into the big room with all the archers. And as you can see, the only area we have not explored is off to the left. And now I can snipe at these dudes, so let's see how good a job I can do with that. Just barely missed him. You gotta shoot a little bit underneath these fellows. Oh, there are two of them over there. I'm just, I'm just barely underneath these guys. You can't... Very tricky to get the aim right for this. I, I do... The one thing the Wii version of this game got right is the crosshairs. And I know you needed that just so you could be able to see what you were doing. But I'd very much like to have similar crosshairs to this game. Just because it's a little bit difficult to hide. How are you doing? I didn't notice the ones on the side. It's difficult to tell exactly where it's going to go, but then again, th that problem has been a staple of just about every Zelda game. At least the 3D ones, Ocarina of Time had that problem, Wind Waker had that problem, although most people didn't really have an issue with it, you just had to get used to it. By the way, exploding barrels explode, so stay away from them. 
Those are mainly a problem if you have the archers on your butt. But for the most part... Actually, I probably should have uh, killed them with the exploding barrels, because they're stupidly standing in front of the exploding barrels. Should have showed that off. I don't know why I didn't. I guess I forgot they were there and just wanted to show off my awesome arching skills! When I used to go to camp, I was fairly good at archery. I did enjoy archery. How many of you guys have tried archery? I, s I haven't done it on horseback, but... It's pretty fun. Then again, I'm pretty sure that they just had the target really close, so you felt good about yourself when you hit the bullseye, even though it really wasn't that difficult. Oh yes, this is why I remember the exploding barrels. Hang on, guys, I'll take care of you. Exploding barrels behind you, right? Can I hit those instead of hitting you? Well, I... I'll take that as a yes. We've almost maxed out our rupee count, 280. Want to take any bets? Who thinks I'm going to max out before the end? Anybody? Probably there were 20 rupees in the last room. I never counted. Never actually cared. I just want to make sure I'm close to max by the end, because there's a lot of stuff I'd like to buy once we leave. Remember what I said about the dungeon pretty much holding your hand so you know exactly where to go? Hi, Link. Don't do that. See, can we just jump straight there? Hallelujah. Now, pretty sure the treasure chest is right up there. Dare I go get it? How do I get it, anyway? I know it's nothing more than rupees. I still want to go get it and see what it is. Just for completeness sake. Hi, buddy. Shoot it down before the thing goes back. Sure, it does. But yeah, I just want to make sure everything is rupees. If nothing else, to show you guys, but really it's to satisfy my own curiosity. Because I know you probably want nothing less than me just getting to the end and getting out of here and going to the next place. But believe me, that's going to be a lot more boring than you think, because there is a lot of side quests and stuff that I'd like to get out of the way before we get to the next dungeon. But that's going to be for High Fairy. I should have scooped you up, didn't How you doing? Where is that... Is it above me? Where the hell is it? It's on that. How do I... Do I jump to it, or... Do I need, uh... Equipment from the next dungeon to get it? I think so. Well, without getting into too much detail, I'm pretty sure you can get there after you do the next dungeon. If I'm wrong, text on the bottom will appear and mock me. So we enter the final room. Last bets. Who thinks I can max out my rupee count before the end? Actually, there are so many enemies, it may very well happen. Just want to take care of the archers before they become a problem. Hi, buddy. And... Hi, buddy. And you guys are down there. Did I ever mention how I hate ground-based archers? But yeah, I get used to seeing them a lot, because guess what? They're going to be here as well. Fun, fun times. Hi, heart. You went away. I wanted you. So, of course, they give you arrows here because you need them to knock down this bridge. Okay, shooting gallery, ahoy. Shooting gallery, ahoy. Did I ever mention how overpowered the bow and arrows are in this game? I have now. So whoever said I wasn't going to max out my rupee count, you straggler. Every time. Just in case they give me a fairy. I'll drink the milk we got in the second episode, was it? Yeah, I don't know why they would give you two fairies, though. Because they gave you a fairy in the last room. But I'll still keep it out just in case, because I'd like to have two fairies if I can. Fairies are very helpful to have early on in the game, because they don't give you much else, except a red potion if you want to buy it, but there's no reason for you to. And I don't suppose there's any reason for me, them to give me a second fairy, so I will get my iron boots out, and we will go to save the Patriarch. Probably gonna be easy, I mean they just locked him up, so we'll unchain him, and the world will be saved! What about the fused shadows again? Can I get any more sidetracked?
that's the Patriarch? Doesn't look anything like a Goron. Certainly did a good job chaining him up, though. He looks fairly strong. Wonder how they managed to do that. Hey! Sauron! No, but it's a big, shining gem on his forehead. I can't imagine that that would be of any importance in the boss fight. Nope. I will admit, though, he's fairly menacing for the second boss. Twilit Igniter Virus. Now, as intimidating as he is, shoot the gem on his forehead. That's really all there is to this fight. Just shoot the gem on his forehead. You can't target it or anything. You just have to shoot it. And then, use your iron boots to get some weight. Go after his chains. Go after his chains, Link. Come on. You have hands. Walk in the opposite direction as him. Trip him up. And he falls over like a freaking loser. He also destroys the columns. I never actually knew he destroyed the columns. It's news to me. Okay. You want to get a cheap shot on him? Wait until he reactivates his fire. Keep your target sighted on where his forehead was before he did it. And then, shoot. Free shot. There you go. Just make sure you have your iron boots on when you do this. Because the floor does have magnetic material in it, and you need the extra support to pu push this guy over. I also have to love how the camera automatically centers itself around him. Or, uh, you know, as you walk around, the camera is still facing him somewhat. But I'd still like to have a little bit more control with the camera. Still wish that... You know, you could target the guy's forehead. Actually, while we're here, can we get uh, Mindus advice? Could have got Mindus advice on the last boss, too. Defeating that thing, not going to be easy. Keep attacking the eye. Oh, okay, so I suppose you get different text if you've already done it before. That's actually a bit of a downer. Grab the chain link. No pun intended. Would you trip? Did I not uh, do it fast enough? I'm guessing I didn't do it fast enough. Oh, never mind. There he goes. We should be able to finish him off in this round. Let's see if we get the A button. Yeah, we get the A button. You know what that means. Well done! Now we have two fused shadows. Hmm. You know, you've been very helpful so far, so as a reward I'll tell you an interesting story. Zant. That's a wonderful story! That's the name of the King of Darkness who casts the Pall of Shadows over your world. He's very strong. You'd be nothing to him in your current state. But Zant will never be my king. I have nothing but scorn for his supposed strength. Now that Zelda's much better. Well, she's not actually. I just read the text wrong. Yeah, carefree youth really doesn't teach a life of luxury, does it? No. Giant? Hi, Giant. It's me, Midna. Learn to read. That is all. But I guess I shouldn't begrudge her circumstances of life. She didn't choose it after all, and I'd never wish harm on her. No, as long as I can get my hands on the few shadows, I'll be just fine. That was a sudden change of heart, wasn't it, Midna? Well, just one more lap, shall we? 
You know, wasn't it just in the last temple where she said that it was Zelda's own choosing? I think she's kind of softening up a bit, Midna. Character development, maybe? And the Patriarch is actually still alive? Looks a lot more Goron-y now, doesn't he? Ugh. Ugh. What am I doing here? Man, that must have been some really heavy booze. Oh, wait a second. You know, for the first time ever, I forgot to pick up the heart container after the boss fight. Wow. Huh. I have a little less respect for myself now. Way to go, Giant. You forgot how to read, and you forgot to pick up hearts. 